today on News Center. Meet the winning team from the Moorhead Film Challenge. See how former Eagles celebrated being a part of the Alumni Association at Keeneland. And take a look at the fire that damaged two local businesses this week on Main Street. All this and more today on News Center. Good evening and welcome to News Center. I'm Jacob Miller. And I'm Kenzie Thompson. Thanks for joining us. Here's your headlines for April 14, 2016. tonight with the latest on a devastating fire that destroyed two downtown Moorhead businesses, including Electric Beach Tanning on West Main Street. News Center's Chad Hedrick joins us from the scene with the latest on the investigation. Chad? Yeah, guys, devastating for sure as that fire destroyed two businesses right here in downtown Moorhead and damaged another. The fire was reported around 2 Tuesday morning and fire crews were on scene until about 6 a.m. with utility crews being on site much longer as the fire damaged some wires which affected phone, cable and internet usage for some. The two businesses destroyed H2O Wireless and Tobacco as well as Electric Beach Tanning. Now according to Electric Beach they had about 22,000 active clients and almost 400 of them visited the shop on Monday. Now we reached out to Electric Beach in regards to those accounts and they said no further withdrawals will be made. The owner of the Electric Beach was also leasing out H2O and tells the media that he estimates about a million dollars worth of damage. Now guys, the owner of Electric Beach does say that he plans to reopen the shop, but that could take anywhere between six months to a year to accomplish. In downtown Moorhead, I'm Chad Hedrick. Back over to you guys. Chad, thanks. The investigation as to what caused the fire is going on. Of course, we will continue to follow the story and bring you the latest as it becomes available on News Center's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Kentucky's Democratic Attorney General Andy Bashir sued Republican Governor Matt Bevin on Monday, claiming Bevin overstepped his authority when he ordered budget cuts for state colleges and universities without the approval of the state legislature. Bashir, who is the son of former Governor Steve Bashir, followed through on his threat to file a lawsuit challenging Bevin's, quote, blatant violations of law by cutting 4.5% or $41 million from the state's colleges and universities in the last three months of the fiscal year. Bashir says the lawsuit is an answer to Bevin's quote, unconstitutional and illegal order. Bashir wants a judge to force Bevin to release the funds to the schools. The governor's spokeswoman, Jessica Ditto, says the governor's office strongly disagrees with Bashir's actions and says that they will respond as necessary in court. Bevin, who took office in late 2015, has proposed $650 million in state spending cuts over the next two years in a plan to begin paying down Kentucky's public pension debt, which is estimated at more than $30 billion. His proposal included the budget reductions for colleges and universities. Last night, state leaders finally reached a deal on the budget cuts to higher education. Very little has been released, but we do know that 4.5% will be cut to universities over the next two years. The full legislature will vote on the budget tomorrow. Governor Bevin signed a bill creating one marriage license form for gay and straight couples in the state. Bevin said Wednesday his signature brings, quote, statutory finality to the marriage license dilemma. He said it allows county clerks to follow the law without compromising their religious liberty. The legislation is in response to Round County Clerk Kim Davis, who spent five days in jail back in September for refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples based on her religious beliefs. Davis said she couldn't issue the licenses because they had her name on them. Those new forms won't have the clerk's name on it. Bevin signed the bill with no fanfare in his capital office in Frankfurt. A Moorhead State student is learning the hard way that what you post on social media can come back to haunt you. Abigail Reed posted this photo on her Instagram when she attended a Donald Trump-themed party last week. Reed is seen wearing a shirt depicting a Mexican trying to climb a wall. This is in reference to Trump's plan to build a wall at the U.S. and Mexico border. Screenshots of the picture were posted all over social media, even getting a response from actress Jack A. Harry, better known as playing Mom Lisa on the popular TV series Sister Sister in the 90s. She tweeted Reed saying, quote, your ignorance and racism are showing. I hope Moorhead State teaches better. You're just not listening, end quote. Now we met with Reed earlier this week to discuss the situation and possibly doing an on-camera interview with which she accepted and later canceled. However, she did give us a written statement saying, quote, I'm sorry if it offended anyone. It was never my intentions. And to everyone upset about it and tweeting nasty things, you all are in my thoughts and prayers every night that you will find peace and love in your hearts, end quote. 
The university has yet to comment. New Center also reached out to Jack A. Harry, and we have not heard back. The Alumni Association hosted an event at Keeneland Sunday to celebrate Kentucky and the experiences of being a Moorhead State Eagle. New Center was there. We are excited to be at Keeneland today for Moorhead State University Alumni Association Day. We have nearly 100 alumni and friends who have come out to join us for this exciting day to get to reconnect with each other and enjoy the races. It's very important to host alumni events like this so the graduates come back together, get to reconnect with each other, and also learn about what's going on on the campus today. There are many different events throughout the year for alumni. Many of them are social events like this, but we also have events that are networking in nature so alumni can come together and talk about their careers, their experiences at Moorhead, and how those are helping them professionally today. Today is special because we are in Central Kentucky celebrating Kentucky. What is more important to our culture here as Kentuckians than Keeneland and horse racing? So while it's not something we have directly in Moorhead, we do have equine programs there. And we have alumni everywhere. As a matter of fact, when we arrived here today, four different alumni have greeted us as employees here and are showing their eagle pride by coming and speaking to the Alumni Association at the event. Once an eagle, always an eagle. The Associated Press Awards are right around the corner, and winning those awards are nothing new for MSPR. News Center reporter Courtney Howe has more. Moorhead State Public Radio has received 14 nominations in 10 categories for the 2016 Associated Press Broadcasters Association Awards. News Center caught up with Assistant News Director Dan Conti, who was nominated for Best Long Series News Feature for his coverage on Kim Davis. Conti expressed his feelings on the MSPR students who were nominated. I'm really proud of all the students who work in the Moorhead State University uh, Public Radio Newsroom who were nominated this year, but that's not unusual. What we found uh, year in and year out in the AP competition is that our students really do exceptional work and the AP awards every spring uh, give us a chance to uh, to say thank you for that and hopefully get some professional recognition. Sam Morrill is a senior at MSU and is nominated for Best Feature Story. I would say that I'm excited. I am um, just for the experience. Uh, I've never been to anything like this before and it's kind of a, a big deal in, in broadcast. Uh, there's going to be so many uh, professionals in this field there that I'm excited to uh, get to meet and see and, and also um, I think WKU and a couple other colleges had some students uh, participate and were nominated in some categories, so it'll be neat to meet some of my peers as well. The MSPR crew heads to the AP Awards Banquet Saturday, April 30th in Louisville. Reporting for News Center, I'm Courtney Howe. The Moorhead Film Challenge took place over the weekend. News Center reporter Jacob Valerio attended the showing to find out who won. The Film Challenge is a 48-hour film competition. These um, activities take place all around the country, and this happens to be, we've decided, I guess, our 12th year, um, asking students on a weekend to take a prop, a character name, a genre, and a line of dialogue, and shape a film around it. It was a long weekend, but uh, it's, this was our first time making a movie together, so it was really cool. Uh, well, uh, it, this was my first time working with these guys, and like I was just taken aback by how professional they were and how, I mean, they were just very welcoming. They welcomed me into the group. Like I felt like that I was a part of it. And it was a good experience. Yeah, got to <laughs> got to see how. <laughs> everything was done. Over the weekend um, I got to talk to a couple of different people who were uh, working on different films and it was really cool to kind of like talk to other people and see what how they would interpret um, you know the things that we had to put into the movie um, as opposed to how we put them in. At the end of the experience like whenever like, it blacks out and everyone's sort of like just sitting in that moment like how do you feel that's like sort of that's like the win for us uh, it's not just hey you guys won that like our win is the way that people feel whenever it's over and like whenever if we can do that then that's like what really matters I, it's cool definitely like everybody likes to win right yeah. um, 
but like all, all I think all of the videos were they were awesome man like they were really really good so all the films were phenomenal a man was arrested and a police officer was injured after both fell through the ceiling of a store during an alleged burglary police say the alarm at the GameStop in Ashland went off around 345 Wednesday morning Officers went to search the building and found that someone had entered the building from the roof and through the ceiling. The SWAT team was called in to find the alleged burglar. During the search, the investigators say the man they were looking for fell through the ceiling. 27-year-old Tro Troy Literal from Ashland was arrested and charged with burglary, possession of burglary tools, possession of marijuana, resisting arrest, terroristic threatening, and was also served with a bench warrant that was on file. A SWAT team member received minor injuries when he also fell from the ceiling onto the checkout counter. He was taken to King's Daughters Medical Center for non-life-threatening injuries. And coming up, Chris Horn has your forecast in the New Center Weather Center. And we're meeting two jail workers who saved an inmate's life. Stay with us. Welcome back right now. It is 72 degrees and it is clear. Very, very warm day to go out for a little jog in the afternoon. Looking at our record temperatures for today, back in 1977, it was 85 degrees. We almost got out there. We're in the 70s. But uh, back in 1940, it was more chillier. 19 degrees. Jeans and a very heavy coat. Looking at our normal high and our normal low, we are above our normal high. And, but, and also, for tonight, we're going to be above our normal low. Looking at our temperatures brought to you by WKYT. Most of the Commonwealth, you're sitting in the 70s. Besides the northern part of Kentucky, you're sitting into the highest 60s. Looking at Monticello, you're sitting at 69. Somerset, 70. Danville, you're sitting at 70. Taking a look at Louisville, you're sitting at 72 degrees. Looking at our live, first alert, live radar, it is clear through the Commonwealth, except for little spotty rain showers here and there throughout the western and southern part of Kentucky. Looking into tonight, clear. Low in the low 50s, sunset's going to be about 810. So you will have a very good shot at that moon tonight. And you won't need a coat for tonight as it will be in the 60s going into right around 10, 11 o'clock. And now back to Kenzie. Heroes aren't always where you would think they would be, especially at the Round County Detention Center. Nick Oliver has the story. It's a sight nobody wants to see. It scared me that bad. A woman attempting to hang herself, and months later a man overdosing, let alone in a jail cell. Twin brothers in Rowan County Detention Center officers Denny and Nathaniel Conley saw both these sites within six months of each other, making them quick to respond 
and burning an image in their minds. It's a lot of stress on a person when that happens. In October, while Denny and Nathaniel were making their normal rounds, they discovered a woman hanging in a holding cell by a noose tied with a bed sheet. She didn't have a pulse. Then in March, brother Nathaniel discovered a man, unconscious, overdosing from drugs. We thought for sure that he was gone. With CPR and first aid training, both brothers sprung into action, saving both lives by performing CPR until paramedics arrived. It don't matter how many times trying, all that is completely different when you got someone laying on the ground. Yesterday, the brothers were honored by the Kentucky Jailer Association with an award of valor for their life-saving actions. No award's going, I mean, worth someone's life. I mean, you'd rather know that you save someone's life than get an award for it. I mean, we're just doing our job. An award for their actions and their preparedness to face any situation. For News Center, I'm Nick Oliver. When we come back, Chris Horn has a look at your extended forecast, and Nick Oliver is in with your Eagle Athletics update. Yo, why are you looking at bags, bro? What you need is a chick magnet. You put me in the room and boom, chicks. That's what I'm talking about. Dude, we have been out all day. Breckenridge Hall. What's so cool about Breckenridge Hall? Hi, I'm Chad Hedrick, News Director for News Center. And I'm Leanne Zaproni, Assignment Editor for News Center. And we want to tell you how you can stay connected to News Center wherever you are. That's right. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash newscentermsu. Or follow us on Twitter or Instagram at msu underscore news center. And don't forget to catch us every Thursday live at 5 p.m. right here on MSU TV Channel 85. Or see us on msutv.net. And welcome back to Current Conditions. Right now it's 72 degrees. Really warm and I might go take a jog after this. Then current humidity is 23, uh, 23%. Winds 6 miles an hour. Not been a very windy day like it has been for the past couple of weeks. Looking at our current temperatures brought to you by WKYT. Most of the time also sitting in the 70s. But we take a look up here in the northern part. You're all sitting about the high 60s, mid 60s as well. Taking a look at our eastern part of Kentucky, London, you're sitting at 72 degrees. Jackson, you're sitting at 73. Millsboro and Harlan, you're sitting at 72 degrees. Prestonburg, you're also sitting at 72. Ashland, you quite didn't get up that high, you're sitting at 70 degrees. Looking at our first alert live radar, it is clear with some spotty rains down in western part, eastern part. We're just getting the sunshine right now. Just enjoy it. Looking into tonight, it is clear and it will be warm. That's right, warm. We're heading into the low 50s. Sun's, sun's going to be about 8, 10. But by right around 9, 10 o'clock, you can see that moon with no jacket. It will be still in the 60s going into about midnight tonight. But after midnight, you're going to be seeing the little chilliness in the air. Looking into tomorrow, sun and clouds. That's right. We're going to be some seeing higher temperatures going into next week. 70 degrees for your high tomorrow. For your sunrise, it will be about 7 o'clock. So you may get that chance to see that, that sunrise when you're heading into class. Or if you're just chilling out in your car, just waiting for that sunset. Looking into our seven-day forecast, heading into the weekend, we are going to be in the mid-70s. It's going to be really nice and warm. That is right, nice and warm. Going into Monday, it's going to be still warm, but we could breach 80. That is right. We could be in the 80 degree mark. Going into Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to be about the mid 70s. But as you can see, heading into Wednesday, Thursday, 
we will have some more chances of thunderstorms coming into the forecast. Great. Well, thank you so much, Chris. We're finally getting that warm weather we're always hoping for. Yeah, it's you know? really nice, and I still don't know how to dress for it. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> still getting up in the morning. But I know it's just beautiful walking you know, outside with all the trees and the flowers and bloom and everything and campus looks so right. beautiful and it's so sunny I almost got like a tan yesterday I'm pretty sure you know yeah I always look <laughs> out my window and like see what everyone's wearing <laughs> Just to but check. yeah yeah <laughs> all right well thanks so much Chris let's have a look at your Eagle Athletics with Nick Oliver your home for the Moorhead State Eagles this is New Center Sports the season for the Moorhead State tennis team is coming to an end and the Eagles are pretty confident about heading into the tournament. At this, at, the, at this point in the season, the Eagles are 5-10, and 10, but they love a challenge of playing higher ranked teams. They expect to do well in the OVC tournament considering how hard they have been working in practice. The Eagles come off a three-game losing streak going into tomorrow's match, but feel that the nine-day break has prepared them. Appropriately, New Center caught up with head coach Kevin Fulton to get the scoop on the team's progress. Well, we've had a, a really good pre-conference schedule. We've played I think five or six teams in the top 50 in the country. Uh, we really worked that schedule to develop these guys to get them ready for conference. We started out 4-0 in conference. I uh, had a little hiccup here the last couple weeks where we lost some tight matches but overall I feel very very good about the guys season and heading into the tournament next week I think that we have a really legitimate chance of taking care of business. Oh, well, each group is different. Uh, the one thing I feel like these groups that both have done is they've accepted what's been put in front of them as a challenge. They, they work very hard every single day in practice. And where we started in the beginning of the season, you know, with the scoring system has changed this year in college tennis, where it's gone from uh, add to a no add situation, which means when it's deuce, the next point wins. We've really become a better team at handling pressure and keeping intensity going throughout the match. I really feel good. We've had a really good week of practice. As you can see behind me here, the guys are going at it again today, and I look forward to that. And the girls actually went one-on-one -on -one last weekend, so we win both these matches. We're in the tournament. We're playing two of the top three teams in the conference, and if you look at the scores, we've been in every single match in conference. We've had opportunities where we easily could be 5-2, and 6-2 and two right now. So I, I, I like our chances this weekend. Your Eagles play right here in Moorhead tomorrow at 12 o'clock against SIUE. Moorhead State University baseball lost a nail-biter to Ohio State University on Tuesday. Ohio State scored the first and last run of the game in the second inning. The Eagles failed to turn their six hits into runs. Even with junior first baseman Jesus Carrera going three for four and sophomore left fielder Tyler Neiman collecting two hits as well. The Eagles fell 1-0 to the Ohio State and dropped to 19-14 on the season. The Eagles host the OVC rival UT Martin this weekend with Game 1 starting Friday at 5 p.m. Moorhead State football will host its alumni in spring game this Saturday. April 16th, the alumni game will start at 5 p.m. with the spring game following at 7 p.m. Both are free and open to the public. There will be a pregame tailgating and opportunities to purchase tickets for the 2016 season. And we'll be right back with after this with more news. It never gets old, huh? Nope. It kind of makes you want to... Break into song? Yup. I love the sunset. I love Eagle Lake. I love the forest. I love when eagles play. I love the campus! And all its sights and sounds. boom de yada boom de yada boom de yada boom de yada I love philosophy. We love diversity. I love English. And all its weird words. I love the music. And all its melodies. Boom de yada boom de yada Boom de yada boom de yada I love fraternities. I love sororities. I love to draw things. And all the athletes. I love more heads. It's such a pretty place. Boom de yada 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 boom de yada
Wilma Grody Symposium will be held on Monday the 18th. News Center was able to speak to Professor Michael Harford about the event. Wilma Grody Symposium is named after former MSU President Nelson Grody's wife, Wilma. The symposium was started by Wilma as her initiative. We didn't have a women's studies program. She wasn't alone in it. Of course, there were many faculty members who uh, supported this, and I was one of them. Uh, uh, the first symposium uh, the, was just a wonderful symposium. It was on the theme, A Women's Way of Knowing. This year's theme is moving to the front. Students were encouraged to make posters that will be shown during the symposium. Uh, again, the student presentations that have come in look great, and um, some of them are, have been done in concert with a faculty member. Others have been done independently by students. They cover a wide range of subjects, and following that, uh, there will be a um, uh, some awards, some recognition of Wilma Grody, who um, played a role in starting the women's program at Moorhead State University, the women's studies program. The symposium will also host Sally Bingham as this year's speaker. And she is, of course, an author. She has a, a number of different novels, eight novels, a uh, number of different books of poetry, and um, she has written essays and worked for in the literary world for years and years and so uh, it's a tremendous opportunity to learn from someone of her stature. The poster presentation starts at 3 on Monday and Sally Bingham is scheduled to talk around 4 o'clock with the reception following. Reporting for News Center, I'm Alexis Matthews. Those binge sessions on Netflix will soon cost you more than what you're currently paying. Starting next month, monthly rates will go up 25% to a total of $9.99 from $7.99 it is now. Back in October, the streaming service raised rates to $9.99 for new customers, while current customers didn't see a payment increase until now. Customers can opt out of the raise in fee, but they will lose HD options and only one person at a time will be able to use the service. Snow to 9, Kentucky weather has a mind of its own and has been a little confused about what time of year it is with the up and down temperatures. Fortunately, the extended forecast is showing some steady warm temperatures, so therefore facilities management has decided it is time to switch on the AC. They confirmed the switch on their Facebook page earlier this week, and the full transition does, does take a few days, but we should notice the cooler temps in the buildings very soon. Hashtag Walk It Out is alive and well. MSU faculty and staff are hitting the trails to stay healthy. New Center's Brian Courtney has the story. Moorhead State University is encouraging its faculty and staff to get outside and get active. This past Wednesday, Outdoor Adventures Recreation Coordinator Tommy Willis hosted a presentation to promote hiking trails at Red River Gorge and trails here on campus as a healthy habit for staff to incorporate into their lifestyle. The Red River Gorge is very unique to this area. Um, as I mentioned in the presentation, it's uh, one of the main reasons why I came to this university to work here. Um, I've met people from all over the world. Uh, and I think a lot of people within the area don't realize how unique it is. Um, it actually has the most arches in the world. The hiking there is amazing. Uh, the climbing there is amazing. Uh, there's beautiful waterfalls. Um, and you can also, as far as from a physical standpoint, um, hiking is a great way mentally, physically, uh, as well as spir spiritually um, to get yourself, uh, you know, growing as a person and as an individual. Willis also gave advice to those at the event as to how they can burn more calories when hiking. I just get out and do it. You know, just try it once. Uh, make sure that you do it gradually, starting off easy for yourself. And from, you know, a physical standpoint, if you want to, if you're trying to burn calories and things like that, uh, if you add, you know, 10, if you add a backpack onto yourself that's full of water, um, you could actually burn 10 to 15 percent more calories. Um, as well as if you choose to take the uphill, which very few people do, uh, you'll hit that 30 to 40 percent as far as maximizing your calorie burn. Reporting for News Center, I'm Brian Courtney. Well, that is going to do it for us tonight. Remember, you can always find your news on News Center's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. And you can catch this broadcast again on msutv.net. On behalf of everyone here at News Center, I'm Jacob Miller. And I'm Kenzie Thompson. Have a great evening.